Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I've had numerous requests for low carb videos. Since I've been eating low carb myself, I thought I would share my basic eating plan with you. I just realized last night that I've been eating mostly gluten free. I didn't plan it that way, it's just how it ended up working out. I've been eating the same menu for a while now and I feel amazing. I have so much more energy than I used to and it just works for me. So I'm hoping this might help someone else. I do plan to make some upcoming regular low carb challenge videos where there'll be lots of new recipes. So this is just the beginning. I am so busy that I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to figure out what I can eat that fits into my diet plan, so I do prefer to have a regular rotation of the same meals that I can customize to give myself some variety. Because eating low carb is more expensive, it works better for me to buy my food in larger quantities once a month and then just buy the fresh foods I need every one to two weeks. I've been able to eat a healthy, low-carb meal plan for about $136 a month, which is just over $34 a week. This is just my basic meal plan. It doesn't include pantry staples. There are some items that I buy once or twice a year, like oil, peanut butter, spices, etc., so I didn't include those here. I'll post this list in the description area of my video. You can easily adjust this to suit your needs. I'm eating primarily eggs and plant-based protein products, and I'm spending a good portion of my budget on protein powder every month. If you wanted to customize this budget, you could always take that $48 and use that to purchase animal-based protein products. The chicken I featured in last week's video would go a long way here for one person. Low carb is a relatively loose term because some people are referring to a keto diet when they say low carb. This is not keto, which is very low carb. I'm using some academic sources that define low carb as 130 carbs per day or less. I try to spread those carbs out evenly throughout the day, so my goal is between about 35 to 40 carbs per meal, and then I have a little bit left over for a snack if I want one later. This keeps my blood sugar level throughout the day, and I have zero cravings, and my energy lasts all day. I patterned this way of eating based off of some diabetic eating plans. This is one of the breakfasts that I've been eating on this plan. I don't love eggs, but they do make me feel great when I eat them. So I created this meal that tastes delicious and only has 34 grams of carbs. I make sure to use only one quarter cup of refried beans. I've been trying to moderate my sodium levels so I don't salt my eggs here, but because the beans and cheese have so much sodium, this doesn't taste like it's lacking salt, which is good because I don't want to eat tasteless food. I buy Tillamook Extra Sharp Cheddar Cheese once a month in a two pound block. And if I was the only one eating it, it would probably last me about a month and a half. I have made so many variations with these same ingredients on my channel, although I have to give credit to one of my viewers for suggesting putting the beans inside my tacos with the eggs because they are so creamy and delicious. Sometimes I'll add a little salsa, but the majority of time I just eat them just like this with a little extra cheddar on top. Like I said, it's good to know that you can make different variations and basically have the same amount of carbs. That way you can kind of keep yourself happy and satisfied with enough variety. Here are at least two dishes I can think of off the top of my head that consist of the same ingredients. The huevos rancheros would have fit my carb balance perfectly if I would have eaten two of these. The total amount of black beans would be about a quarter cup and that's one of my favorite breakfasts right there. I also think that the chilaquiles verde would work if I would have served this with two eggs because I believe that's about two tortilla shells in the chips. I also made some migas on my channel that would have been perfect if I would have eliminated the additional two tortillas and just stuck with the tortillas and the migas. 
I once made these egg taquitos, which would be a perfect balance with the three tortillas. I really enjoyed those. Those were good. Sometimes for a variation, I'll eat some sourdough toast along with my cheese eggs. According to the Canadian Diabetes Association, sourdough bread has one of the lowest glycemic index among breads. So I've been eating two slices with my eggs along with some smashed avocado. And sometimes for a special treat, I'll have some toast with one tablespoon of strawberry preserves. I bought this sliced sourdough at Walmart and it was expensive at $5.54 a loaf, but it does have 32 slices and I like the fact that the pieces are smaller so they fit perfectly into my toaster. I do keep this in the freezer and then just pull out two slices as needed. They go from freezer to toaster. This way I have zero waste and this loaf will last me about a month and a half. I'm wondering if Walmart sells a sliced sourdough bread in their bakery section. If so, it would be much less expensive. I just don't remember if I saw it or not. I found another variation on the eggs that I sometimes eat. This one has spinach, avocado, and a little bit of cheddar cheese and salsa. By not having the beans, I'm able to eat three tortillas and still keep my carbs at 35 grams. If I'm not eating eggs, then I'm usually eating oatmeal, and overnight oats is one of my favorite breakfasts. I make this with one cup of oat milk. Sometimes I like to add cacao powder into my oatmeal while it's cooking. It gives it a nice, rich, unsweetened chocolate flavor that I really like. I ordered my cacao powder from Amazon, and I've had this bag for over a year. I'll put a link to it on my Amazon store. I've enjoyed having this on hand, and it goes great in smoothies too. I bet this would be good in pancakes also, but I guess it's kind of a naughty word for a low-carb video, although oatmeal pancakes with only a half cup oats would probably work. Here, I'm eating it with pumpkin seeds and just a little bit of milk, but sometimes I like to top it with strawberries and either walnuts or sliced almonds or a small amount of shredded coconut. Having a variety of toppings really does make having oatmeal so much more enjoyable. And this tastes good without any sugar. I'm just using the frozen unsweetened fruit as a sweetener, and as long as I get a little piece of fruit in each bite, it tastes good to me. For lunch, I usually do a stir fry with tofu. Tofu is a cheap, low carb protein source and I really love it. I thought it would be interesting to see how my lunch compares to the plate method from the American Diabetes Association, which by the way, some of my viewers are not fond of. According to their plate method, I need more veggies here, but unfortunately, if I added more vegetables, I would be exceeding my carbs. I was recently talking to one of my viewers about serving meals in a way that will be pleasing to you or your family. If you know that it's going to make you unhappy to see a very small amount of rice next to your protein and vegetable, it's probably going to be better for you to add the rice directly into the stir fry like I'm doing here. Most of the time, I'm eating this with just a little sesame oil and chili garlic sauce. This meal is really filling. Before I was watching my sodium and carbs, I would sometimes add in some hoisin sauce in my stir fry. It's an easy shortcut to a very flavorful stir fry. I also like to use brown sugar with soy sauce. But since I've been watching my carbs, I've been laying off of that. I like almost any vegetable in my stir fry, so I usually use whatever's on sale, and I almost always make two meals at a time because it heats up well in the microwave the next day. Sometimes I like to have tacos for lunch. I use this plant-based ground beef. This has three grams of net carbs per serving and the total carbs for three tacos is about 35.5. 
And for my dinner, I usually have a protein shake. I know that some people prefer to have these for breakfast, but for me, at this season of my life, it just works for me. Plus, I don't really like cooking in the evening. I once purchased this vanilla bean powder from Sam's Club, but it's too sweet for me, so I found an unflavored one on Amazon. Since I add a half a banana to my shake, it's plenty sweet enough. Not long after I started purchasing the unflavored protein, I heard a report on the news about erythritol being associated with an increased risk of heart attacks and strokes, and it wasn't just a slight risk, it was a significant association. Fortunately, it's not included in their natural, unsweetened version. I usually eat my shakes with half a frozen banana, two scoops of protein powder, and either some water or oat milk. Sometimes for a variety, I'll add either strawberries or berries, or if I happen to be eating my shake in the morning, I'll add some cacao powder. But it does have a little bit of caffeine, so I try to avoid that at dinner time. I've been eating two dates with my shake every day and it feels like I'm eating dessert. It's something I look forward to every day. Some of my diabetic viewers have told me that they eat dates also and that they don't impact their blood sugar like other carbs do. Even though they are sweet, dates have a low glycemic index. When I tried researching this on the American Diabetes Association website, it basically just said that two dates a day are good for diabetics. So do with that information what you will, but I will say that they are quite a treat. I bought these at Sam's Club and they're not quite as good as the ones from Trader Joe's because those were pitted, but these are still creamy and delicious. If I'm not in the mood for a shake, I'll usually eat a dinner with these black bean patties. I like to eat these with a little shredded cheddar on top along with a salad and a side vegetable. My youngest son loves to take these black bean patties like this in his lunch at work and sometimes he'll eat this as a sandwich on French bread with lettuce and avocado. Now I want to share with you a recent food I discovered at Aldi. Sometimes I get messages from parents and they tell me that their child is now gluten-free and they don't know what to feed them. So I thought I'd start sampling gluten-free products and create more gluten-free meals for those viewers. I picked up the veggie pizza with the cauliflower crust at Aldi. I'm guessing that most of my gluten-free viewers already know about the awesomeness of this pizza. However, I'm sure there are at least a few people that don't. So let me tell you, this pizza was delicious and so unexpected. I really don't know what I expected for a cauliflower pizza, but this tastes nothing like cauliflower. It just tastes like a thin crust pizza and the sodium content was a little higher than what I wanted. So I ended up cutting this in fourths and eating it over four days. I could have eaten this with a side salad and it would have been a great low carb meal. I tried to get my oldest son to try some of this, but I lost him when I told him it was made of cauliflower. I'm telling you, this is very good. This is a game changer for gluten-free eating and I definitely hope you'll give this a try. Here are some low carb snacks, starting with two of my favorite. Last year, my viewer shared with me how she makes this zucchini with mozzarella and it was really good. I love this snack. You basically just microwave it, but I ended up browning mine under the broiler to get a nice crispy top. Mm -hmm. 
I've been wanting to tell you about these Better Not bars that I've been buying at Sam's Club. They are dark chocolate and sea salt. They have nine net carbs and my whole family loves these. They're really tasty. I like to have these on hand for emergencies. Sam's Club sells these in a 24 count box for $12.96. I've also been wanting to tell you about this new drink I found at H Mart. So I guess I'll just add it to this video. It's a reduced sugar lactose free latte. It does have 12 grams of carbohydrates, but that's much lower in sugar than a regular latte. And it's really tasty. Plus I love the fact that they offer a lactose free version. And since I'm mentioning them, they also carry the barista rules lattes and the Madagascar vanilla flavor is my favorite. It's so smooth. I'm not even sure what flannel drip means, but it's just the smoothest tasting drink with no aftertaste, but that one is higher in sugar. Since I have a stricter budget these days, sometimes if I want a treat, I'll get myself a drink while I'm out. I like to show my love by giving food to people, so I like to treat my family with snacks here and there, and buying a drink for someone is much less expensive than buying lunch. I know this video was a little different from my regular videos, but I do hope that you liked it or that it was at least entertaining for you. If my videos have been helpful in any way, I do hope that you'll consider subscribing to my channel and turn on the notifications tab so that you'll be notified when I release a new video. It does help my channel and helps to support the kind of videos that I make. Thank you so much for watching friends. I'll see you next week with more budget videos.